Let's talk very briefly now about electrical devices that are added to circuits intentionally to add resistance to a circuit. Resistance is neither good nor bad inherently. Sometimes resistance is useful, sometimes resistance is detrimental. It's analogous to friction. If you've got an engine, friction is your enemy. You lubricate the engine as best you can to reduce the friction. On the other hand, if you're a tire on the road and you're going around a slippery corner, friction is very useful because it's what keeps you on, it keeps your car on the road. Similarly, with uh, resistance, resistance is, there's nothing that you can do, to, almost nothing that you can do to eliminate resistance. I don't want to get into, we're not going to get into superconductors at this point, but generally speaking, there will be resistance in the materials, the devices that you're going to use. If we have a voltage source, say a 9-volt battery, as much as we would like it to be otherwise, there is some internal resistance that resists or creates a, an electrical pressure, if you will, a back pressure on this voltage source such that as current starts to flow, we see a drop of voltage at the terminals of the battery. And a realizable model of a battery consists of an ideal power voltage source and an internal resistance. Now sometimes we'll actually add resistance. For example, if we've got a voltage source and a cold room that we want to heat up will drive a resistive electric heater where the purpose of the of the resistor the purpose of the heater is to take the energy from the energy source and turn it into heat to warm up the room so the point here is that resistance is not in inherently good or bad it just is and under some circumstances, we're going to do what we can to eliminate the resistance. In other circumstances, we're going to actually add resistance to a circuit. There are different ways of doing that. We're going to talk about two types of resistors, two very common types of resistors here today. Fixed value resistors and variable resistors. A fixed value resistor is typically made out of carbon. Here's a diagram of what a fixed value resistor would look like. They're typically about a half to three quarters of an inch long. They've got two wires coming out of them. There's no distinguishing between ends. It's not a polarized device, and we'll learn what polarized devices are later on. But they are relatively small. And these devices contain a fixed amount of resistance. Because they're so small, it's difficult to write the value of resistance on a resistor. And so they developed a color coding scheme to clearly mark or to code the value of resistance on the resistors. So this color coding scheme is based upon the colors of the spectrum. Starting out with black, the color black represents the digit 0. Brown represents the digit 1. Red is 2. Orange is 3. Yellow, 4. Continue on down through green, blue, purple. Gray is 8. And then white is 9. And so by placing a sequence of colored stripes, you can effectively write numbers across here. And what we need to do is understand what those different digits or how to interpret the digits that these colored stripes represent. So let's take this first one right here. There are three stripes relatively close together, at least towards one end of the resistor, and then there's a fourth stripe on the other end of the resistor. The first one is red. The second one is green. The third one is black. And the fourth one is gray. When there are four stripes on the resistor, the first three stripes represent the numerical value in a type of scientific notation. And the fourth stripe represents the tolerance or the precision of the resistor. So, let's just try one here. Red represents the digit 2. 
Green represents the digit 5. And black represents the digit 0. When there's three stripes together like this, the first two represent the significant digits, and the third represents the number of zeros following it. So in this case, we have 2, 5, with no zeros following it. This would be a 25 ohm carbon resistor. The final um, band here represents the precision with which the resistor is, is uh, manufactured. Gray represents 10%. So this resistor would be 25 ohms plus or minus 10%. Well, 10% of 25 ohms is 2.5 ohms. So this resistor would be between 22.5 ohms and 27.5 ohms and meet spec. By a 10% a resistor, it's guaranteed to be within 10% of the nominal value represented by the numbers. Okay. Let's do another example. Let's take this five band resistor. Here there are, are four bands rather than three bands representing the significant digits. And then the last band here, once again, is the precision band, only this time it's gold. So what we've got here is we have a blue, a red, a black, and a green band, and then the precision band is gold. Blue represents the digit 6, red represents the digit 2, black is the digit 0, and green is the digit 5. So, once again, the last of the numerical stripes represents the number of zeros that you're going to add after you interpret these other stripes ahead of it. So we have a 6, a 2, and a 0. 6, 2, 0. And then we add 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. Put some commas in here just to make it a little bit easier to read. And we see that what we have here is a 62 million ohm resistor or sometimes would refer to it as a 62 mega ohm resistor. The gold band here tells us that it's a 5% resistor. So the value of this resistor would be 62 mega ohms plus or minus 5%. Okay. Those are fixed resistors. They come in a whole bunch of different sizes. I'll refer you to the internet or the back of your book to, to uh, lists of readily available um, fixed value resistors. Now, variable resistors. Once again, there's a resistive material connecting two ends. But unlike the fixed resistors, this one has a third terminal in between. This third terminal is connected to a what is known as a wiper with a knob on it. You can turn the knob and it moves the position of this wiper. This wiper is, makes a connection to the, resist, to the resistive material. So depending upon where the knob is set, the resistor or the wiper makes a connection, in this case here, and the resistance between pin 1 and the center pin, pin 3, will represent or will be that portion of the total resistance from here to there. And between pin 2 and pin 3, this other pin over here and pin 3, you have the other part of that resistive arch. So let's just assume that this was a 10 kilo ohm variable resistor. Variable resistors are also referred to as potentiometers and sometimes we'll briefly or quickly refer to them as simply pots. So let's say that this was a 10k pot. 
And between pins 1 and 3, this part here, let's just say that that represented about 3,000 ohms, 3 kilo ohms. Then the rest of the 10K would be found between pin 2 and pin 3, and you'd have 7 kilo ohms of resistance there. On the other hand, if you measure between pin 1 and pin 2, it won't be variable. It will be the nominal value. In this case, it would be something on the order of 10 kilo ohms. So, two different types of resistors that we can use in our circuits to accomplish, golly, a bunch of different things that we'll be learning about throughout the rest of this semester.